Hey everyone, John Tierney here from theautomationschool.com. And in this episode of The Automation Show, we're gonna test out a new temperature sensor from IFM. But before we do, I wanna say a quick thank you to all our patrons over at patreon.com forward slash automation. Now with that said, let's go to the overhead camera here and take a look at what we have. First, we have the cable for the temperature sensor. Let's get this up here. See it's upside down, great job. <laughs> uh, here we go, you can see it's the EVC 707. You can see the pinout right there. Okay, we'll put that one side. And the next piece is the TN2511. Okay, let's go ahead and open this guy up here. Okay. Let's see, let's zoom out a little bit here. Okay, see how it comes. Pull it out and take a closer look here. Okay, there's the wiring diagram on there. There's the display where we do all the programming, get the readouts. Okay, and also in the box is a little manual. Now this is really, really small print. So um, I think we're gonna take a look at the PDF instead over there on the PC. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, here's the manual. I'll put a link to this in the description. And the first thing I want to talk to you about this sensor is the switching function. So output one is a digital output, right? It has two options. It has a hysteresis option and it has a Windows function. And um, I understand in many applications you'd want hysteresis, right? Where you set a, you know, a window with an on and an off set point. So here, the, uh, the, the uh, SP1 would be one, one set point and RP1 would be another. Um, but in our case, we're gonna use this uh, as uh, doing like temperature for the studio. And cause that's just the simplest thing for me to do here for this example. And for that, we're gonna use a window function. I like to keep the temperature in the studio between 65 and 80. All right, to be honest with you, I like to keep it at 65, but it's not always possible to get it that cool. In any case, you know, once it gets close to 80, I just start sweating, so. Um, that's going to be our range for today's uh, example. So we're going to set it up between 65 and 80. And uh, that will allow me to hold on to it and get it to go above 80, you know, just using my body temperature. So in any case, that's what we're going to do. We're going to use the window function. So we'll have to set up the uh, window function high and window function low. You can see both those parameters right there. So let's see. That's the first thing I wanted to show you about this guy. Now the next thing is now it has four different uh, analog output options. We're gonna start with zero to 10 volts because then testing this with some of the micros, they only had zero to 10 in. So we're gonna start off with it at zero to 10 volts. If we have time, we'll also try to four to 20 milliamp. But uh, in any case, we'll, that's what we'll do there. Um, just go scroll through this. One nice feature I like about this uh, sensor too is you can change the color of the display. So when the temperature's in the you know, 65 to 80 degrees range, we're gonna have a green display. But when it either gets too cold or too hot, we're gonna change the display to red, which is really cool. I love that feature. That way, if you're in the facility, you can look down if you get a bunch of these sensors, and if any of them show up red, you know there's a problem there. So I really like that feature. Let's see, what else do we wanna talk about here? Um, the wiring. Now, let's take a look at this. So we have four wires. We got brown, which is a positive. We got blue, which is negative. We got black, which is output one, digital output. And we got white, which is output two, the analog output. Okay, and then if we look at this uh, sample circuit here, we can see that if we have a sourcing output, we're gonna wanna use the black going as a digital output, right? It's gonna be sourcing power, it's gonna be a PNP. And then in that case, we'd use the white as the analog output. So that's how we're gonna wire it up. And again, this sensor does support IO link, and we will be covering that in a future video. But I just thought trying to learn all of that while trying to learn how to use the sensor was just too much for, for one show. So we'll get to that in the future, future episode. Okay, so we covered that. And then here, we'll actually walk through this, but the manual does a good job of not only showing you the menu. So this is the menu, okay? And, uh, but also it has an area in the menu that explains each one of those mnemonics or, or three letter codes. So you know what out one is, out two is, and all of that. So with that done, we're pretty much up to speed here. So let's go over and let me bring over, let's zoom out on the overhead cam here and let's bring over the PLC we're gonna use first. 
and that would be our brand new S7 1500. And you can see I already have the cord set wired in. So let me show you how I wired this. Now, if you watched the previous episode, I want to tell you that I've actually changed some of the wiring. Currently, this power supply is now only powering the CPU. Okay. All of my IO power now is coming from this side top power supply. Okay. Believe it or not, this is a 10 amp power supply. Look how small it is. Um, in any case, I want to thank the folks over at Siemens for sending that in. And um, we're going to use that to power all of the IO, including our sensor. So because of that, you can see here that I have the brown going to positive and the blue going to negative. So that's that part of the wiring for the sensor. Now, as far as the digital out, you see a black, right? I got that wired in here. You, you probably saw the last episode, so you saw me wire up all my, my digital IO. But here you can see my new sensor coming in right there, okay? And we'll go online with the PLC and we'll see it turn on and off. So we have that. And then as far as the analog's concerned, I've actually wired it into the second analog input as a voltage input. And I talked to you about we're going to do the voltage for a 0 to 10, okay? So that's how we have it all wired up in the system. Okay, so now what we have to do is we have to connect the sensor here and it's keyed. So we just line up the key. There we go. And we'll screw it all together here. And then I will turn power on and we'll watch the sensor boot up. Let's see if we can get a little closer here with the overhead cam. Let me go ahead and turn everything on and I'll be right back. Okay, you can see it started up here. I'm gonna hold it with my other hand so I don't uh, heat up the probe there and get the temperature too high. And the first thing we'll wanna do is uh, change it out of hysteresis mode into the window function mode, which uh, is what I prefer here to use in the uh, office. So I'm gonna go ahead and press the dot here to go into programming mode. And I'm gonna go down to extended functions and press the dot again. And I'm not gonna reset it. I'm gonna to go to the output, press the dot, and I'm gonna change it by holding down the down arrow key change it from hysteresis to window function. And I want it window function normally closed, meaning when it's not in the window, I want the output to be closed. In other words, if I'm not in my favorite temperature range, my operating temperature range, or here in the office, the, the comfortable range, then I want that output to be on, okay? To say, hey, you're out of range, right? When I am in the range, when I am in the window, everything's good, so I want the output to be off. So that's why I'm choosing normally close. So with that said, I'm going to press the dot to back up. And the other thing I want to change here too, before I do too much is the units, because I want to do things in Fahrenheit. So I'll go ahead and choose that. I'll hold down the down arrow key and press it again, and then press dot to back up. Now let's go all the way back up to the top. Now that we've made those two changes, okay. And now we can start with the window function high and window function low. So in this case, um, the window function high, let's set that. I don't want it to be 140 degrees. So let's change that to maybe 80 degrees. That's something uh, that will be easy to demonstrate here as we're uh, playing with the uh, sensor. Whoops, go up a little bit. Okay, that's good. I hit the dot to back out. Now let's go down in the function, uh, window function low. Go ahead and program that. And uh, 62 is a little too low. I think I'm gonna bring that up to 65. Okay. Okay, excellent. Okay, what's next on the list here? Next we have the ASP two that's the analog stop point for so for the analog output where does it start what's zero or four if we're doing four to twenty what's four or if we do zero to ten what's zero so let's go ahead and set that minus 40 i hope it never gets that cold in my office so let's go ahead and make that maybe 32 degrees so we try not to let the office to get below freezing here in the winter because um you know some Products don't do well below freezing. Okay, great. So we're good there. That's the stop point. Now let's look at the end point here. 
300 degrees. Well, <laughs> hopefully it never gets that hot in here. So we're gonna make the end point, let's say on a really, really hot summer day, it could get up to 120 degrees. So that'll be our top uh, temperature value. Okay, so we got our start and end point there. Now let's go back into the extended functions. No, I don't wanna reset it. I've already set the output one. Output two, let's take a look at that. Right now it's set for current, but um, I have it wired into the SM1500 as voltage. So we're gonna go ahead and change that. So we hold down on the down arrow key here, and now I can change it to voltage. Okay, what's next? DSP1, this is the uh, switching delay and the output. I don't want to change that at all. And I don't want to change that delay either. Uh, FOU1, okay, so this would be, let me just scroll down the manual here. This would be what happens if there's an internal fault with output one. Do you want it to go off? Do you want it to stay on? So I'm not going to change that. Same thing with FOU2, that's for output number two. So if there's a fault with output number two, what behavior do you want it to do? We already looked at units of measure. We changed that to Fahrenheit. PNP or NPN. So this is a great little feature. I'm going to leave it as PNP because that's what my uh, PLC wants, my input cards want. Um, low, this is the lowest value the, the uh, um, sensor has recorded. We just turned it on, so um, it doesn't have many low temperatures. And this is the high, high is the highest temperature it's recorded. So if you wanted to go through and see, hey, how high did it get here? How hot did it ever get here? You go up to the sensor and take a look at that. And this is the uh, cough is the, if you're gonna calibrate the unit, we're not gonna calibrate it. Color, now we definitely wanna take a look at this one. If I, if my output's on, right? If I'm out of my window, I would like the color of the display to be red. Otherwise, I'd like it to be green. So instead of being red all the time, I'm going to hold down the down arrow key. And I'm going to be red if output number one is on. Okay. Uh, this, this is how fast the display updates, I believe. Yes, and it's uh, set for 200 milliseconds, which is which fast enough for me. And that's it. We're done. That's all the settings we had there. Okay, so we'll back out. You can see right here, it's at 79.9 degrees, but it's red. Did we do something wrong? Let's go ahead and heat it up to 80. Okay, you can see the output came on right there, right? You can also see it right here on the controller, but we got that color backwards. Isn't that interesting, right? We thought we did everything right, but uh, we didn't. So let me go back in there. Okay, we'll go back down, extended. Go all the way down the color. There she is. Okay, so let's change that to green. See if that works. Okay, so we can go back up. Whoops. Okay, so we'll go all the way back up. Okay, so now look at it's red because we're over 80 degrees. And if it comes down below 80, it should turn green. Let me blow on it here. Yeah, there we go. Now let me get it to go really high. And now you can see again, the output's on. We'll get the output on the controller and uh, we'll get the red display. So with aside from that color, uh, we got everything uh, programmed pretty good the first uh, first uh, time around. Now what I'll do here is wait for it to cool off and uh, verify that it still works, that it still goes to green and the output goes off. Okay, you see it just went green, just broke 80. You probably can also hear the fan, I have to turn the fan on to get it to to go down and you can see the output now is off. It's not going into the PLC anymore because it's within my window. So that's really cool. I love how the display changes colors. It makes it easy for you to just, uh, you know, look down the line and see which temperature sensors are reading a value that's outside of the window. So with that said, let me turn the fan off here and uh, we'll put this one side and let's go into TIA portal and see what those values say in there. So let's go over to the computer here First thing I want to do is go to device configuration. I want to check out the configuration for that analog card here. Let me make this bigger. Channel one is what we're right into. 
and it set the plus or minus 10 volts. Now I did try zero to 10, it did not work. I got nothing. So don't know why that is, but the good folks over at Siemens said do uh, plus or minus 10, and that does work. So I do have that set there. If we go to the IO tags, um, let me just give some of these guys a tags here. We'll just call this analog in zero, analog in one, that's enough for now. And we'll be using this guy here. Um, but while I'm here, you know what I could do is I could change channel zero to be current and make it four to 20. Excellent, okay, so with that done, Let's go ahead and download to the controller here. Okay, let's load it up and finish. Okay, so now I wanna do is, I wanna pull up those uh, tags. Okay, and I wanna monitor here. Okay, see this value right here? You can see I don't have anything here for my analog input zero because I don't have anything wired to it. But here you can see I got a value of 14,715. Oh, so let me reach over here and grab the temperature sensor and I will, wow, look at it, it's going up fast. As the temperature is rising, let's see if I can put that under the camera. As the temperature is rising, you can see the value inside the PLC is also rising. Okay, so with that done, Let's see if we can't wire the same exact sensor into a Compact Logix controller. So let me get that set up and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back and you can see I've wired the sensor here up to a Compact Logix. So same power supply, same wiring on that side. But here you can see I get the digital output going to input number zero. And then over here I have it wired up for current. Now it's still programmed for um, voltage. So we got to go ahead and fix that here. So let's go back into the program. That's under the extended. And output number two. Okay, it's voltage. Let me hold down the button here. We'll change it to I. Okay. And then we can go all the way up to the top. Okay, it's around 78. So let's leave that here. And we'll go over to the computer. And here we can see that coming in, that value coming in. And if I hold it down, put my hand on the temperature sensor, and if I put my hand on the temperature sensor, you can see it's going up pretty fast. And if we look over there to the overhead camera, we're at 87 degrees already. Okay, and if I put it down, it should start coming back down. Okay, now, if it's in the red zone, we should also see, let's see if we can see it here. If it's in the red zone, we should also see that first input, input zero is on. You can see it right there. So when it cools down below 80, that input should go off. Let me uh, speed up the video here and I'll be right back. Okay, it's green and if we look over here, the light's off and as soon as I heat it back up, we got our output again. And with that, that's how easy it is to set up the IFM temperature sensor, the TN2511. Really appreciate them sending those samples in so we could use them on the show. Also want to thank Siemens for the side top power supply and PLC, as well as Rich K who donated the Compact Logics a number of years ago. Really appreciate it. Um, if you'd like to help support our show, you can do so over at patreon.com forward slash automation. You get the entire season for free, for life, plus all kinds of free extras as well. You can find out more at patreon.com forward slash automation. And if you know anybody looking for automation training, send them over to the automationschool.com. That's where I work full time. That's what keeps the lights on. And uh, tell them the, that uh, you saw me on the automation show and uh, I'll give them an extra discount. With that, I just want to thank you all for watching, subscribing, and, and uh, just helping us keep going. I want to wish you all a very safe, healthy, and happy week. And until next time, my friends, peace.